All right, so this is going to be a brief tutorial on phase changes or when states of matter change. Just think of phase as states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and we're thinking about that when it changes. All right, the last lab we did was um, how does temperature affect density, and you guys saw that as temperature goes up, density goes down, and I kind of showed it on this graph. Um, the reason for this is if you have your D equals MV equation right here is uh, as you heat something, the object, the matter will expand and that means the volume, it takes up more space. As volume increases, D will decrease because of that. So that is why the density decreased as it goes down. However, there are some exceptions to the rule. For example, water, as it freezes, it actually becomes less dense and that's why water, or that's why ice floats on water. Uh, but we're going to talk about why that is later, why that's actually an exception to the rule. But most things for the most part are going to fall according to this graph right here. As temperature goes up, density will go down. And this kind of brings us to how phase changes work because as temperature goes up and uh, the volume gets, uh, or as temperature goes up and volume gets higher and higher, you start getting into different phases of matter that are that are less dense accordingly. So if we had a liquid uh, in lab, we did an experiment where we found the, the the density of air, and it was a really, 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 really tiny number compared to the compared to liquids. Um, that's because the volume increased so much on it. The volume is so much. Um, on that gas so the density is really, really low. So that kind of brings us to our phase changes. Um, so what I have here is a, a little graphic that has solid liquid gas and it, ha it shows the name of going from one to the other. And this is pretty basic. Uh, the, the examples I'm using here is water just because it's easy to, to understand. So if you have solid water or ice right here, if you go from solid water or ice to liquid water over here, it's called melting. It's kind of what you would assume it would be called. And then the opposite would obviously be freezing. If you had liquid and uh, you wanted to turn it into a gas, liquid water turning into steam, that's called evaporation. You guys have probably heard of that word. And then gas going back to liquid is called condensation. The tricky part, though, is when you want to go from solid to gas. It completely skips over the liquid. It just goes from solid to gas. That's called sublimation. And the opposite of that is called deposition. Uh, those are very rarely seen. One good example of solid to gas is if you've ever seen dry ice. Dry ice is... Uh, goes right from a uh, solid straight to a gas, and that's why it's called dry ice. It never gets wet. It never turns into a liquid. Uh, for the phase changes, energy is needed to change anything. As we talked about early, earlier in the year, energy changes matter. Uh, in this case, the energy would be heat, and heat energy is needed is, needs to be gained in order for melting, boiling, or sublimation to occur. So it's kind of it's kind of common sense. Yes, if you need if you want to melt something, you're going to need some energy. If you want to boil something, you're going to need energy. And the exact opposite is true for freezing, condensation, and deposition. Energy needs to be lost. So if, if, if you know, water it all of a sudden loses energy, loses heat from its surroundings, it will freeze into a solid. Um, so that's basically a really brief overview of phase changes. If you have any questions, uh, let me know.